In the last video, we've taken a look at different data type and data formats, including YAML. As a brand new DevOps platform engineer or SRE, you'll come across different data formats and file types. In a previous video, we've covered YAML. YAML is extremely popular in modern DevOps because of its readability. It focuses on the human factor. Today, we'll be taking a look at JSON. Now, JSON has been around for much longer than YAML. JSON is a data language focused more on applications. Today we're going to be taking a look at JSON, how to write JSON, some examples to get you started, and why it is super important to learn JSON as a new DevOps engineer. YAML and JSON are some of the few languages you can go ahead and learn in one day. So why not? Today we're doing just that. So without further ado, let's go. Now, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's basically a lightweight data interchange format. It's fairly easy for humans to read and write, but more importantly, it's easy for machines to parse and generate. So JSON is very popular in API or process or application communication and passing data between them. Also note here that it specifically is for object notation. So similarly to how we described objects in YAML, we can do this in JSON as well. JSON often describes objects, which represents data that is transferred between applications. So JSON is similar to what we've learned in YAML for describing data. Similar to how we learned in YAML, in an IDE like VS Code or developer tool, I can right click, I can say new file, and I can create a new file called infrastructure.json. Notice the file extension is called .json, which describes a JSON file and the IDE has the special icon so it knows that this is a JSON file. Now just like YAML, in JSON we described objects basically building out our data. And objects can be anything, so we can use our imagination. And objects have fields to describe the object. In JSON, we use keys and values to define fields on an object. So we can have an object called a person that can have a field called first name or another field called last name. Now important to know that JSON is built on two types of data structures. The first one being a collection of name value pairs or key value pairs similar to yaml in various languages this is realized as an object a record or a struct dictionary hash table keyed list or associative array basically we're going to use key value pairs to describe what's called an object so that's the first type of data structure the second one is a list of these. So a list of values or objects, which is also known as an array or a list. So to define a JSON object, we just open close curly brackets. This is the beginning and end of a JSON object. And to describe the object, we want to start creating fields or using key value pairs. Since this is an infrastructure JSON, let's use this to create our first server. So I can create a new field called name and the value is web server one so this is the name of my server now there are a few things here that are specific to json notice that the key is surrounded by quotes as well as the value whereas in yaml only the value is surrounded by quotes we also have the separator similar to yaml so there's a lot more quotes in json we have to quote the key as well as the value if we want to add another field we have to put a comma and then create another field here i I have another field called IP address with a value. So important thing to note is that the colon character is the separator between key and value and notice the quotations around keys and values. If you miss these, your format will become invalid. If you're using an IDE like VS Code, it may highlight that for you automatically. So we can see that there's something wrong here. So we have to make sure that all strings as well as keys are quoted. And we have to make sure that commas exist. Otherwise, we'll get an error 
as well. We don't have to put a comma at the last field. If we do that, we'll also get an error. You can see that there's an error trailing comma there. So JSON enforces quotes for strings and keys. And the other thing to note is that we have these curly brackets to form the start and end of an object. This is something we did not have in YAML as YAML used indentation. So YAML used spaces to indicate the start and end of an object. So spaces have its purpose in YAML. For JSON, spaces like these spaces we have over here is purely for readability. Technically in JSON, I could just do this and put everything on one line. I can also remove some of these spaces like so. So I could do this to make the file slightly smaller, basically compress all my data into a single line, remove all spaces, but this impacts readability. This is great for server to server communication, but not good for humans to look at. Whereas this is much easier on the eye. Now in JSON, we can also nest objects. So we can have objects inside of other objects. So here we have two string fields. We could put a comma and then create another other field. So here I'm going to create a field called operating system. And instead of just doing this and creating just another string value, I'm going to create an object value by opening and closing the curly brackets. This is defining a new object. And for readability, I can just press enter and we can assign some fields to this object. So I'm going to give a field here called type. This is Linux. I'm going to put a comma and start another field. I'm going to say my distribution is Ubuntu create a comma to do my last and final field with version 24.0. So here I have another key and the value this time is an object instead of a string. So I can nest objects and have objects within objects, just like we did in YAML. So the important takeaway is that the curly brackets is what stops and starts objects as this whole unit of text is an object. And then we start another object within that object as a value. Now, quick one, before we continue, most of you are not subscribed. So if you like the video and it adds value, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe and share this with your friends. Now, JSON supports a few different data types. So far, we've taken a look at strings. We've also taken a look at objects. So a value can either be a string or an object. We can also have numerical data types for numbers. So for my server example, we could introduce a field called CPUs and the value can be numeric. Here we have an eight core machine. These numbers can also be decimals or floating point numbers. So we can have something like memory as an example. So here we have a decimal number. So we have strings, we have numbers, and we have objects. There is another data type called Boolean. So for example, we can have a field called has public IP, and we can set this to false, indicating that this server is a private server. Notice that the numerical data types, as well as the Boolean data types, don't have quotes around them. And also notice that I'm strictly placing a comma after each field, which indicates the start of the next field. Now, as you may have noticed, JSON is a little bit more stricter than YAML. We have to have quotes around keys and values for strings. We don't have any quotes around numerical data types and Boolean. And JSON strictly supports true or false without quotes. In YAML, we could say true, false, yes, no, on and off, and we could use a variation of cases. In YAML, we also noticed that we could add comments. So I was able to put a comment like this in YAML. JSON does not support comments. So we can't add comments like we can do in YAML. What some people do to get around this is they actually add another field, something like this, which indicates that this is a comment. So sometimes people will create workarounds such as this by creating another key, which looks similar to the previous one and just indicating that this is a comment. But this is not great. There's also other data languages that has been born from JSON called JSON-C, which allows comments. So people have found a way around some of these limitations. Now in data, sometimes we want fields that are empty. Now we can't just leave the value blank and we can't leave the value out because that'll break the JSON syntax. We can't have an empty string because that is still a value. We also can't put zero because that's a numerical value. 
value. Now, in computer science, a non-existent value is called null or nil. So when taking a look at our server over here, we've got a field that indicates that we don't have a public IP address. So we could do something like this and say public IP address equals null because we don't have one. So null indicates that we don't have a value for this field. Now, those are the main fields that you need to be aware of in JSON, similar to YAML. The second type of data structure that's important that we covered briefly is called arrays or lists. This is useful for an obvious reason. Sometimes you want a list of strings, a list of numerical values, a list of objects, like a list of servers, a list of applications, a list of port numbers or networks. So when taking a look at our server definition that we have over here, we could introduce a new field called disks. And to indicate an array in JSON, we firstly create a colon. This indicates the separator between the key and the upcoming value. And then we use the square brackets. So the open close of a square bracket indicates that this disks is an array or a list. Currently, this is an empty array. So this is also valid. This just means that we have no disks or no items in this array. We can add strings in here like so. So I can have one string for the OS disk. If I wanted to create another value in an array, all I need to do is comma separate them. So I can say comma space and I can have another string data disk one. I can do this again, comma, and put data disk two. Notice that I don't need to put spaces here. That's purely for readability. Now, this is an example of a list of strings. I can also have a list of numerical values. So if I clear this out, I could say I want I have disk one, disk two, disk three. So arrays can be strings, numerical values, or in our case, it's probably better for us to define an object because we know a disk has a lot of properties like SKUs, the size of the disk, maybe the type, whether it's an SSD or not. So to create an array of objects, we know that to create an object is an open, close, curly bracket. So this is an empty object inside of an array. So what we can do here is start filling out our object just like we created the operating system above here. So we can also format this nicely so that it's readable like so and we can go ahead and create two fields inside of this disk object so here's the start of the object the two fields and the end of the object notice i have the trailing commas and i've got the quotes around strings as well as the keys numerical values don't need quotes so this is one disk object if I want more disks or more items in my array, I put comma and I can go ahead and paste the second disk followed by a comma and my third disk. So that is how you create a brand new list with strings, numerical data types, as well as objects. Now, currently we have one big object for our server. We could turn this whole thing into a list of servers following the same principle. So to do that, this is my object that we've created over here. I can go to the top of this. I can say servers, indicating that we want multiple servers. Start the colon character, open, close, square brackets. What I can do is I can remove the first bracket, go to the end of our object here, and then close the square bracket. So now we have a server's key with the start and ending of an array. And to finalize this whole JSON object, I have to wrap the whole thing in curly brackets like so. And the cool thing about Visual Studio Code, I can right click and I can say format document, and it will make everything pretty again and readable. So here we have a server's object now defined by the key here starting an array and we have our server in the array this means we can now add multiple servers so we could have web server 01 we could have web server 02 and so forth so that is arrays or lists in json So firstly, why is JSON so important? Not only is JSON used to communicate between applications, it's mainly a data format to hold data. Software engineers, developers, front-end developers, back-end developers will all understand JSON. And when you work as a DevOps engineer, platform engineer, or SRE, you will work alongside developers a lot of the time. So it's good understanding the stuff they have to deal with. But there's a lot more to JSON. JSON has been around 
a long time, a lot longer than YAML. So most applications support JSON as a way to configure those applications. So JSON is also used as a configuration language to configure applications. Most programming languages support JSON for configuration. JSON has also become the de facto standard for applications to communicate to one another and transfer data back and forth. JSON is great and efficient for programming languages to parse and read the data. It's quite good for performance, it's pretty easy to read for humans, but it's mostly designed for systems. YAML was born out of JSON because YAML is a lot easier to read. This means wherever you can use YAML, you generally can use JSON as well. So YAML is very important because it's also used in infrastructure as code, such as AWS code pipelines or Azure ARM, configuration management, such as Ansible, CICD pipelines, REST APIs for transferring data, logging and monitoring and observability platforms. Logs are also often formatted in JSON for parse now, I find JSON and YAML so important for DevOps, SREs and platform engineers that I've made it part of the DevOps roadmap. So the ultimate DevOps roadmap is built to help new engineers. It has a clear indication where to start if you want to start a career in DevOps. The first chapter is all about source control and Git. Git is important because it's the fundamental where we will store documents and collaborate on them. Then we have the free resources section here where I have free resources sources on Git, YAML, and this video, which is JSON. You can interact with this diagram where you can find all of the free resources. You can find more resources on my website here. And to follow roadmap updates, you can follow on Instagram. Now, hopefully this video helped you learn the basics of JSON. And if you haven't checked out the other video on the introduction to YAML, make sure you do so. And if you want to follow the ultimate DevOps roadmap, check the link down below. If you want to support the channel even further, hit the join button down below to become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.